Hi, uh, welcome to all the viewers today who've tuned in today's um, live um, feed. Um, I'd just like to introduce myself. Um, I'm Melinda Gray, um, clinical nurse consultant, um, uh, paediatric asthma at Sydney Children's Hospital in Randwick. I'm also um, on the professional advisory committee for Asthma Australia. Um, and on behalf of Asthma Australia, um, I'd just like to thank you uh, for joining us today. Uh, the aim of the session really is to go through um, inhaler asthma delivery devices. I'm hoping to give you some tips and tricks in terms of uh, the correct use. Uh, and just one of the things um, to say is that you can post any questions as I move through today's discussion and I'll try to follow these up. Um, and if I don't, we have an expert team at Asthma Australia who um, will link you to the relevant websites, uh, provide you with reputable information and follow up with you. Uh, just a little disclaimer, um, today I'm using placebos. So I don't want you um, to get confused because your devices will look different um, in terms of different colors and that. So I am using um, placebos. So um, let's get started. Just a little bit of a background that I wanted to share with you. Um, and it's across the board. There are high rates of incorrect device uh, technique, which is common in both uh, adults and young children. Uh, it's extremely common. Um, and research shows us that about 75% of people are actually thinking that they're using their device correctly. But when they're assessed by clinicians, in fact, only 10% are usually utilizing it correctly. Um, and a lot of people say to me, you know, I've been using a device for a long time, my child's been using it, I know how to use it. But can I say to you, even the experienced people that are using their inhalers are a vulnerable population also. Because what we find is, is that people tend to develop poor habits over about two to three months. Um, the other thing to say is that inhaler devices vary widely um, and no inhaler type is foolproof. Um, and it can take a little bit of a trick in terms of using it. Um, the one important message that I really want to get across to you today is that poor asthma control can actually be a result of incorrect inhaler technique. Um, because what's happening is, is that you're not getting that medication to the airways and then that's increasing your risk of symptoms, flare ups and even hospitalisation. What we've seen is in research is that about 50% of um, people um, often will come to hospital because they're using the device incorrectly. Um, so regardless of the type of device prescribed, the age of the person, um, how much information you've been given, one of the key messages I would say today is that it's really important that you physically demonstrate your correct technique with your GP or a pharmacist. We always say that every point of contact with a health professional, that they're actually going through the device with you. So um, in terms of information um, and the best information and where to get it on devices, so I'm gonna go through some of it today. There are some really reputable websites and Asthma Australia have got all these um, delivery devices, a correct um, technique on their website. Um, and I believe the team will post them today. And also the National Asthma Campaign have actually listed th those also that you can actually go through. Um, one of the key things I see people do is that they're actually um, logging on to the Asthma Australia website and practicing with their device going through the actual steps, you know, once a week or once every two weeks to make sure that they're not slipping into bad habits. That's actually a really good idea. The first device that I'm going to talk to you about today um, are the metered dose inhalers. Um, and these are these ones. So we call them um, puffers, um, uh, breath um, metered dose inhalers. Uh, and what they are is they're an aerosol in, in the actual device. Um, I would suggest that they're not recommended for children um, under eight years of age. Um, can I honestly say to you that it takes a great deal of coordination when using one of these and timing is essential. Um, even educating an 18 year old um, and a, you know, a 20, 30 year old is actually quite difficult with using um, a puffer on its own. There is a quite um, a challenging technique in terms of utilizing how to do it. So I'm just gonna go through the steps. Um, the one thing that you need to do is you need to remove um, what's known as the dust cap, which is here. And just to orientate you the device, that's the dust cap. And this is the mouthpiece here. This is where the canister would sit with your medication inside. 
Sometimes some of the newer devices have a dose counter, um, such as this one here, usually on the inside here, like so, which will actually illustrate counting down the doses. For example, Ventolin unfortunately doesn't have one, but that's another story and we're hoping that will change in the near, near distant future. Um, but yeah, it's always a good idea to check that your actually device um, has medication in it. So remove that dust cap, check the dose counter if it has one, hold the device upright um, like, sh like so. And because it's an aerosol, we do need to shake it, okay? So you shake the device like so, um, you breathe out. So you breathe out of your lungs. So you're breathing away from the device to get that air off your lungs. So breathing out, okay? Then what you're doing is you're tilting your head back. It's really important you tilt your head back, place the device in your mouth and ensure you've got a good seal as you're tilting back. And then you press down on top of the canister as you are breathing in. Okay, so I'm just gonna demonstrate that now. Okay, so tilting back. And what I'm doing is, is I'm taking a breath in and I'm breathing for about five to 10 seconds. And then I'm basically breathing um, out through the nose. Um, I've just had um, someone come and say to me, thank you, Stephanie, for your comment. Um, my, new, my new inhaler has this odd clear plastic thing on the top of it. It makes it hard to use. Um, so this would probably be what's known as um, the wrap inhaler, which is also an aerosol device which has like a plastic thing on the top of it, um, which here actually indicates all the doses that are actually um, counting down. For example, this one here doesn't have that, but this one particularly does. Yes, it can be a bit of a challenge to hold this particular one with a wrap inhaler. The only difference is, is that it's got a cap, which is kind of a little bit tricky to undo, but you can actually just pop it up like so, and that exposes a mouthpiece like so. And it's exactly the same steps. It's an aerosol, so you need to shake it like so. Okay, you then need to um, remove the air out of your lungs um, and then place your mouth around to create a really good seal uh, and tilt your head back and pop your hand on the top of that and breathe down. So I will do this now for you. So I'm holding my breath for up to um, five to ten seconds. Someone's talking to me about spaces. I'm so glad, Mary, that you have mentioned spaces. Um, they are incredibly important. And can I say to you, one of the best gifts you can give someone with asthma um, who has a puffer is a spacer for their birthday, for Christmas, whatever. Wrap it up and give it under their tree. And I'm going to talk to you about the importance of why spaces are so important. But MTIs or puffers are so difficult to use on their own um, and if you use a spacer it decreases the coordination required in terms of you having to push down on the top of the puffer, tilt your head back and taking a deep breath in. And there's a lot of coordination required. You can see that it can be quite challenging. It's even also challenging when you're actually talking like me. So I'm going to talk to you about spacers uh, today um, but what I would say is that I would highly encourage no matter what age to use a puffer with a spacer if you can. So I've talked to you about the wrap inhaler, which is the other device, um, which is also the aerosol, which just has the dose counter. And the only difference is, is the cap removing, but it works exactly the same. The other aerosol that um, I'll talk to you about is also um, an auto inhaler. But before I talk to you about that, I want to talk to you about some of the common errors with um, puffers. Uh, one of the common errors that um, I often see is forgetting to shake the inhaler. Um, people forget that. The other thing is pushing down on the top of the puffer, so actuating the dose um, too late. So as you're breathing in, you're actually much too late and you're actually too, you've almost missed the dose. Um, not um, also breathing in um, and, and holding your breath for five to 10 seconds. And the other thing I often see is that people will take multiple breaths, uh, multiple actuations while they're taking a deep breath in. Um, and what's happening in here, and, and I'll just to explain to you when you're using a puffer, what you've got is large particle sizes. So the aerosols are actually really, really large. So what happens is because they're so large, 
they hit the back of the throat and they sit at the back of the throat. That's why we use spaces because spaces act to decrease the aerosol making a fine particle mist so that they're optimally delivered really right far down into the airways. So with a puffer on its own, a lot of them are large particle size, so they'll sit at the back of the throat. Um, so the other thing is keeping the chin up is important. Okay, so that's another really important thing to do. Um, but I would just say, please get a spacer because it makes a coordination of using this so much better. In terms of washing um, these, um, please, um, you can remove the canister like so. Please do not place this in water, okay, the canister, um, because it does contaminate it. Um, what you basically need to do is just, um, and, and I would generally say, you know, um, weekly for this particular one, but I'm not too fussy about it, and just wash it, the canister, and it's only the canister um, in some, you know, warm soapy water weekly and let it to air dry, okay. Um, there are other, um, MDIs, um, which are white, which are Atrovent and Tylade, um, and they look at our MDIs just like this, but they're white and they're, and they're green also, um, and they should be washed daily because otherwise the system in here gets a little bit clogged, okay? That's just for Atrovent and Tylade. Uh, the other ones um, that are also a puffer are your inhaled corticosteroids, which are sometimes um, the autumn coloured ones, which are orange and um, purple. I'd recommend that they are never washed, the ones that inhale corticosteroid, that they're just wiped out in, in, in the actual mouthpiece with a dry tissue. So it's really only washing the canister weekly with um, using Ventolin um, or Asmol or Aramir uh, and also um, Atrovent and Tylade. Um, I would recommend that you um, would wash them daily and put them out. Um, so they're really important things to note. Um, some people often will say to me, and I've had a, um, I get a lot of questions about how do I tell whether it's full or empty with a Ventolin. It's extremely difficult um, to know with a Ventolin whether it's full or empty, and, and a lot of people will go by weight. Um, there, I know there's scales you can buy and things such as that. Most of them contain 200 doses, um, and because there's no dose counter on it, like these particular ones that the newer generation of medications have, um, what I would suggest is that you always have a spare reliever handy, so that if you're not getting relief from your puffer, your reliever puffer, and you think it's empty, then you can then go and use um, uh, another puffer, um, another reliever puffer. Um, we're hoping soon that it will change, that um, the company that manufactures these, we're hoping will actually start putting dose counters on there. And Asthma Australia will be the first to let you know um, when that actually happens. Um, but really important to remember, um, always have a carry your reliever, reliever with you and always have a spare one if you do need it. So that's metered dose puffer inhalers. The one um, that I also want to talk to you about, um, which is not commonly used, you won't often see it, but there might be the odd person that it has it, and it's known as an autohaler. A uh, particular brand, for example, is Aramir and Cuva. Um, it's a breath activated device, meaning that when you take a deep breath in, um, it will deliver a measured dose um, of medication. Um, this particular one, again, um, not recommended for children under seven years of age generally. Um, and there's a little bit of technique uh, in terms of using it. So um, the one thing that um, we do again, because it's an aerosol, is that you do need to shake it, okay? Shake it like so. It has a safety switch here, and the safety switch flicks up like so, like this. And what you then need to do is that you need to remove the cap like so. There are some vents underneath. Please avoid putting your um, fingers on the vents or your hands because you need that to push the air up. And what you then do is you breathe out, same principle as the meter dose inhaler, breathe away from the device, get the air off your lungs, then place your mouth around here, getting a good seal. You don't need to bite it. And the most important thing to do is you've got to remind people that you will hear a clicking sound. When you hear the clicking sound, it's important that you remember to keep breathing in, not stop. Because some people, when they hear the actual breathing in and the clicking, they'll stop breathing. So therefore, the particle will just sit at the back of the throat. So it's really important that they hear that, okay? So what we need to do is place your mouth around the mouthpiece like so, okay, which I'm going to do. And I'll hear a clicking. Hold my breath for five to 10 seconds and breathe out through my nose and then put the safety switch, which was down like this. 
and then replace the cap like so. And if another um, amount of medication was required, you would actually um, remove the cap like so, okay, and do exactly the same principle. Some of the um, issues with this particular one is that people forget to put the safety switch up. Um, so therefore, it's not gonna dispense the medication. So you need to really put that safety switch up, expel your lungs, put your mouth around the mouthpiece. The other mistake people make is that they don't bite. And the other mistake people make is that they don't keep breathing in when they hear that clicking sound. So that's another device. Um, in terms of washing it, you don't wash this particular device. You can actually just use a dry cloth to actually um, clean the mouthpiece of it like so. Now, uh, I've talked to you about aerosol devices um, in particular, and I wanna talk to you about the most important things I think um, in terms of asthma and management are spacer devices. Uh, they are so important and, and um, I like to think of them as the gold standard. Um, I work in paediatrics, as I said, um, have been for 17 years and um, I know that in the adult population I get many questions and, and, and adults is not my speciality, but they always say to me, can I use a spacer too? And I'm like, yes, you can use a spacer and I bet your management of your asthma and your symptoms will be so much better managed if you're using a spacer. So one of the key messages today is, is get that spacer, buy the spacer. And you can purchase them anywhere, contact Asthma Australia, they're available from the chemist. In terms of spacers, um, there are many different brands and types available. I don't really care what type of spacer you've got as long as you've got a spacer. There are large volume ones that, that come in two halves like so. Um, that you put the two ends in like this and then that's the large volume space or what we call. We've also got smaller volume spaces like this um, and this particular one here. Um, what I would say to you is be familiar with the spacer that you're going to be using because there are little tricks. For example, this particular space you need to take off the mouthpiece like so and then what you do is you put, pop your puffer in the end. Orientate yourself to the spacer because I have seen people think that they put the puffer in the wrong end and that's fair enough because they don't know how the spacer works. So be really familiar with how to use your puffer and spacer. So why are spacers are so good? Spacers um, basically optimise the amount of medication that is going to get to your airways. Remember I talked to you about large particle sizes. When we're using a puffer on its own, there are large particles that sit at the back of the throat, okay? What the spacer is actually doing, and that's being the inside of the space, it's actually decreasing what we call, a bit technical here, but I'll make it easy, the velocity of the aerosol. And when you, and you, when you decrease the velocity of the aerosol, what you're doing is you're creating a fine particle mist, okay? Which is what's inside, you're creating that fine particle mist. And what the particle sizes that are coming out are less than five microns. And that's what we need to be optimally delivered to the airways. Now there is a fantastic um, slide and I'm sure Asthma Australia will post it or have it on their website. And it, and it shows you here, um, uh, just using a spacer and, and the actual drug deposition and you can see here that a lot of it sits in the back of the throat Some of it goes to the lung now. This is the difference when using a spacer You can see all that whitened area in the right and the left lobe of the lung that illustrates to you um, the drug deposition how far that drug is getting to the bottom of the airways So that's why I can say to you really important um, now, Debbie has said, do you need to prime the puffer before use or if you haven't used it for a few days? Yes, I would sometimes um, prime the puffer um, prior to use if you haven't used it for um, a few days. Um, now, in terms of um, spaces and um, using them, the thing to say is that when I talk about sizes, I'm talking about large and small volume. What I will say to you is that what we recommend in paediatrics is that we recommend a small volume mask with a mask attached, okay? Four years and older, we would recommend just the mouthpiece because they're actually gonna get more medication when they pop their mouth on the mouthpiece if they can actually do it. I always say they can use a straw, they can use a sippy cup. If they're sucking, they can usually pop their mouth on the mouthpiece. Um, so masks are, are generally only used for children under four years of age or children with a developmental delay or the elderly or um, um, who are having difficulty with their technique due to stroke. Um, so there are indications for using a mask, 
But what I don't want to see is I don't want to see um, children um, going to school um, when they're, you know, nine years old with a mask attached. And I do see it. Um, they're actually going to get more medication with actually popping their mouth in the mouthpiece like so. So just to reiterate, um, zero to four years, small volume with a mask, um, unless there's developmental delay or it's an elderly person who is has, having difficulties pursing their mouth around the lips. Four years and older can use either a large or a small volume spacer, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and people say to me, oh, which space is better? Um, which um, has better microns? How do they, you know, which is the most efficient? It doesn't matter as long as you've got a spacer, that's the most important thing. Uh, with a spacer, you don't need to coordinate your breaths. Um, you don't need to take a deep breath in. You don't need to tilt your chin back. Um, you don't need to hold your breath. It's just normal breathing. It's a really simple device to use. Um, the reason why spaces are so good is they contain valves and the valves act to direct the flow of medication so it's not being lost to the environment um, as it would with a nebulizer. When you're using a nebulizer, you're using large volumes of the medication and a lot of it's misting going everywhere. Um, uh, Rayleigh, thank you so much. She's asking about the best way to clean a space. So I'm going to talk to you about that um, later in the session. Um, incredibly important information because it can affect the amount of medication that's delivered. So Rayleigh, great question and I will answer it. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to demonstrate how to use um, the puffer and spacer um, correctly. Um, and what I'll do is um, I'll use the mask first just so that you're all familiar with it. Um, this is the end where um, the mask would, would go on the mouthpiece and it's just a matter of, usually the masks are a flexible rubber thing and what we need is a good seal around the nose and mouth. Mm -hmm. This mask is too small for me because this is actually a, a, a paediatric mask but what you're wanting is a good seal around the nose and the mouth, okay, like so. What you also need is your puffer, okay, and what's one of the first things you do when you have an aerosol is you need to shake the puffer. So what you do is shake the puffer and you insert it upright into the end of the spacer like so. Some people say to me, can I shake the puffer in the spacer? Yes, you can, just make sure you take a hold of it like this. What you then do, and the thing is, is with your, um, sorry, with your puffer upright, place your mouth, creating a good seal, and you push down the top of the puffer once, and you're just normally breathing, okay? And I generally say about four to six breaths. If it's a little baby, a little, a little quite young, I say six breaths, but usually, you know, um, anyone like above, you know, five can usually take about four breaths um, in between each puff. So I'm just gonna do that now. So I've just taken four breaths, okay, after each puff. Now, if another dose was required, um, best practice is actually to shake it in between each. Um, uh, but if you forget it, it's okay. But it is, research has shown that if you do shake in between, it can um, make a, a little bit of difference. So if you are able to do it, please do it. If not, if you're in an acute episode um, and you need to get the medication in quickly and you don't have time, that's okay. But best practice is place it again on your mouth. and you're breathing four breaths, okay? So for example, if you prescribe two puffs of um, your uh, puffer, the most important thing to say is it's not all puffs in the chamber at once. It is one puff at a time with four to six breaths after each puff. Because what happens is if you put too much medication is what will happen, it will cling to the inside of the chamber. Okay, so really important. It's exactly the same steps if you're using it without a mask. It's just a matter of taking the mask off like so, putting your mouth around the mouthpiece, creating a good seal. You don't need to bite the mouthpiece. I see a lot of people bite it. You don't need to. Just purse your lips around it like so, and I'll do it again, and I'll push down the top of the canister. And I'm breathing four breaths, and it's just normal breaths, okay? Normal breaths. You don't have to breathe a particular way. People say, oh, should I do this? Should I be taking deep breaths in and that? No, it is just normal breathing, okay? And we've got these valves that are directing the flow of medication, okay? So one puff at a time um, with four breaths to six um, after each use. Common errors in terms of using spacer is putting too many puffs in the chamber. Um, sometimes I just want to say the valve can get a bit clogged. Um, 
and it's a matter of actually looking at your valves for instance you can see the valve here some devices it's very tricky to see the valve um, which is in here but if you think your valve's funny just have a look at it and try to kind of you know um, fill around with it um, and see whether um, can you use a Symbicort with a spacer yeah you can you use a rappy haler with the spacer definitely um, the Symbicort also comes in a turby haler which often doesn't fit on the end of a spacer but yes you can also insert a rappy haler um, onto the end of um, the um, spacer exactly the same principles like so okay it's just a matter of putting it in like so and it can be a little bit of a trick but pushing it in like so making sure that that cap is out of the way and there's your um to be uh, there's your um simbi court rappy haler ready to go for you so yes it can be used so um the other thing is is that um spaces can take on a cloudy effect and that's okay um i'm going to talk um because i know rayleigh wanted to know about um the washing of spaces washing of spaces is incredibly important um spaces are generally are they plastic and when they're plastic they generate an electrostatic charge and when you generate an electrostatic charge medication will cling to the inside of the chamber okay so what we do for spaces just made of plastic um, such as these kind of ones here what we do is we encourage people to wash them in warm soapy water so like your fairy liquid your palm olive so wash it on its own and then what you need to do is you might need to take it apart when you wash it um, little bits might come off which is fine and then you um, place it on the side just to drip dry okay um, people say to me oh can I ingest that detergent no you can't what we need is we need that detergent to create a film, okay? Because they're plastic, they generate an electrostatic charge. And if you use a detergent, it's preventing the electrostatic charge. So it's preventing the medication from clinging to the inside of the chamber. Okay, so incredibly important to wash those. As a general rule, we say wash them every one to two weeks, um, but more frequently if you have a respiratory infection or you're unwell, um, certainly wash it much more frequently. But again, washing it in warm soapy water, um, air drying um, and placing it on the side and, and ready for use. The important thing to note is, and I just want to talk to you about spaces, is we're seeing a much newer generation of spaces come out, and they're known as anti-polymer spaces. And what anti-polymer spaces are is that they prevent the electrostatic charge, so that you actually don't need to um, wash them as frequently with the warm soapy water. Um, the first time you use a plastic space, for example, you do need to what we say prime it and get it ready for use, and that's what we'd recommend. You use that warm soapy water coating the inside, or alternatively, what you can actually do is place not up to anywhere to five there's no concrete rule but up to five or six puffs of the medication inside just to coat to make a film that's for the first time it's used um, but with the antipolymers you don't need to prime them you don't need to wash them a particular you don't need to wash them as frequently because they're made of material that prevents the electrostatic charge um, we would still recommend washing them every you know two weeks or more frequently even if you've got an antipolymer um, so um, I'm seeing a new generation of spaces come through, so be aware that um, these are, that the pharmacy may have stock um, antipolymer ones. Um, but my most important thing is just make sure you've got a spacer, um, and um, th that's the um, correct um, uh, washing of them. So hopefully, um, I've answered the questions in washing them. Obviously. Um, remove the puffer and the spacer. Um, Georgia Clark said, thank you for answering my question about Symbicort, um, fantastic. And can I just say, I love people coming through and saying to me that they've been using their spacer for years. You know, please, if you know anyone who has asthma and they're using a puffer, um, purchase them a spacer. I find it really hard when I'm on a bus or I'm in a public space and I see people using these and they're trying to use it. I'm looking at them thinking, oh, life would be so much easier if you use a spacer. You'd be getting this medication into your lungs. You wouldn't be experiencing your symptoms. So um, it's a really important um, device to get. The other thing I just want to talk to you about, um, I've talked to you about spaces, but there is actually also a paper one you can get now. Um, so we we use this for asthma first aid in schools. It's really good. Um, uh, obviously, it's paper. Only lasts up to a week, so it's not long term use. 
Really good idea to pop this in, um, for example, your glove box or your handbag um, if you don't want to carry around a spacer. And you can get quite tiny ones, but if you don't want to carry around one, you can actually get these flatter ones and, and speak to Asthma Australia about um, those, about where to purchase them. Um, and again, be familiar with it. It's um, popping it up like so. This is the end where the puffer would sit and this is um, where your mouth would sit. So really good. So for asthma emergencies, I'd always have one of these in your bag um, or have one of them in your children's bag. The other thing I just want to talk to you about, um, and I do see some issues that do arise from it, and I should have brought it in today with me, but some people put their inhalers in their device like so. And I just want to err some caution with that. Um, there are ones that I have seen where I've been unable to get the actual blue can. I've actually been able to get the MDI out of the spacer. And that can pose a real risk if you're in an acute exacerbation or you're having life-threatening asthma that you can't actually get your puffer out of the spacer. So just be very mindful about putting MDIs in spacers, um, that making sure that they don't actually get stuck so when you really need it, you actually have got it. So always carry around a puffer and spacer. That's one of the key messages that um, I, I, I'll mention today. Um, and for further information about spacers, please look at Asthma Australia um, in terms of them. But as I said, any space is good. Puffer and spacer and mask for under four years or those with difficulty putting their mouth around the mouthpiece four years and above um, are using it without the mask because they will get more medication without using the mask. So hopefully I've answered your questions about spaces because that's what I could talk about all day. Um, the next one I'm going to talk to you about, the next one I'm going to talk to you about are inhaled asthma delivery devices. And there are um, dry powder devices that some of you may be taking. Um, for example, um, a turbihaler or an acuhaler or um, an elliptor. Um, so the first one uh, I'm going to talk to you about is um, a turbihaler um, and it's a little bit like um, a rocket. Um, and that's one of the most important things I'd say about this is remember it like a rocket because it's got to be loaded up like a, like a rocket. Again, with this particular device, um, under six years of age, I really wouldn't recommend um, using it unless they've got excellent technique. Um, if not, there are other alternatives, um, such as, for example, we are just talking about the Rappi Haler. You could use the Rappi Haler, the aerosol, which is attached to the spacer. There's usually an alternative with most of the medications. So my advice to you is, if you're having um, issues with the actual device, speak to your GP, talk to them about prescribing you a different device. This particular one, um, for example, comes in the brand name Bricanol, and it's a really good one for exercise-induced asthma um, and to relieve um, episodes quite quickly. Um, so I'm just gonna demonstrate how to use it. It's a dry powdered. Um, and with this particular one, you need to unscrew the canister, like so it's usually clear or white, okay? And this space is usually colored, okay? It's colored. What we have here, and it's a little bit tricky to see, but you'll have like a little wheel, okay, here. And with the Bricanol, when the red line appears at the top of the wheel, there are 20 doses left. When it appears at the bottom of the wheel, um, just in a little window, there are no doses left. So it's important that as soon as you see that red line that you do get it replaced. With the newer generations of turbihalers such as Symbicord, the great thing is, is that they now actually have dose counters which will actually dose count down and will show you when they're getting empty, okay? One of the common errors people make is not only not holding it upright, but they'll shake the device and they'll tell me that there's actually medication inside. Can you hear that? That's not the medication, that's actually the drying agent that's in the actual device itself. Okay, so again, um, please look at your dose counter here or look at the dose wheel to see if you have medication here. Okay, so I've removed the cap as I have, like so. And what I then do is I turn this colored base until I hear a click and I'm doing it in the upright position. It must be in the upright position. If you load it on the side, not all the medication will drop in. Therefore, you're not getting the medication to the airways. So turning it like so, until you hear that click and I'm holding it upright. Then what I'm doing is I'm breathing away from the device and then I'm placing my mouth on the mouthpiece and I'm taking a deep forceful breath in. Okay, it's a deep forceful breath with this particular device. So breathe away.
and generally hold your breath for five to ten seconds and then breathe out through your nose okay and then what you need to do is replace the cover like so if you were to require more doses it is exactly the same procedure remove the cap start from the start again load it up like upright like a rocket turning the base until you hear a click breathe out away from the device place your mouth on the mouthpiece making sure you get that good seal in your mouth and then taking a deep forceful breath in and then holding your breath for five to ten seconds and breathing out through your nose okay just remember one one inhalation at a time and then keep going through the steps again if you need it um, so I've talked the common mistakes with that particular one um, are obviously shaking it um, the other thing that common mistakes are that please never get these wet okay because it's a dry powdered avoid um, environments that are really humid keep it in a dry cool place um, that um, is not going to make it wet inside you don't need to wash this device um, obviously if you wash it um, you will actually um, get everything it will be ruined so just a dry cloth that is all you need no water anywhere near these and replace the cover and screw shut like so okay. so that's the turby haler device um, now the other one i'm going to talk to you about is also known um, as an accuhaler um, and um, this you um, would probably see um, in some of the brands such as Blixotide, um, Cerevent, um, Ceratide I should say, um, and this is usually orange or purple, okay? Again, it's a dry powdered, so please don't get it wet. It doesn't need to be washed. It's the same principle. Just wipe the mouthpiece with a dry cloth. Um, inside here is a foiled strip of medication, okay? So in little pockets all sealed. Please don't shake these devices, okay? And just to orientate you, you've usually got a dose counter here. Um, which will count down the doses and usually the last five doses appear in red okay so make sure the first thing you're doing is checking do I need to purchase a new device um, does it have medication inside just to orientate you this is a thumb grip just in here which opens the mouthpiece when you pull it back like so this is the mouthpiece here this little lever here when you push down on it it pierces the foiled strip inside so that it allows the medication to actually get ready um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through those steps with you now so I'm going to shut it up all the device and start again so that we're going through the correct steps the first thing is place your thumb in the thumb grip like so okay and there you're exposing the mouthpiece okay breathe away from the device <sighs> click down on the on here like so push it put it around your mouthpiece put the mouthpiece in your mouth and take a, a deep breath in And breathe, hold your breath for five to 10 seconds and then breathe out through your nose and then um, shut your device. Um, so I'm gonna show that again because Susie didn't see it. So I will move Susie so that you can see it. This time I apologize. So it's a matter of opening the mouthpiece like so, breathing out away from the device, placing your mouth on the mouthpiece, pushing down. Holding your breath for five to 10 seconds and then breathing out through your nose, okay? You don't need to wash it at all, um, keep it in a dry place. I've just had a few questions about spaces. Can you talk about washing the spaces? Why and how often? I think I've talked about that in terms of spaces. So look at the Asthma Australia website. We'd recommend every one to two weeks, but more frequently if you're having respiratory infections um, and washing them in um, warm soapy water and air drying them. Um, you use wash, um, someone, Sue said, um, you wash once a month in water only, no soap. Well, we, would actually, we would actually recommend um, using a detergent. And when I'm talking about a detergent, I'm talking about your palm olive, your fairy liquid, um, things such as that. They're the kind of um, um, products like that you would normally wash your dishes with. Um, I get people that ask me about dishwashers um, in terms of dishwashers. Uh, Dishwashers have a rinse cycle, so you still need to um, get that soap on the inside to prevent the electrostatic charge. So whilst you can place some of them perhaps in the dishwasher, you still need to pop them in that warm soapy water. Um, so um, Sue, Ly Lydia just said, uh, replying to the um, Sue, I overheard a salesperson selling a chemist spaces saying that there were some issues 
with spaces. I can't read the rest of it, sorry, bear with me. Saying there are some issues with spaces. I haven't heard of any issues with spaces. Um, they're very um, good devices. They have a lot of evidence about these devices to support their use. They have been shown to be as equally as effective as nebulizers, um, and we really practice evidence-based research. So um, spaces are um, a gold standard in terms of um, asthma and management and using, um, if you're using a um, puffer on its own, please use a spacer. Uh, the other device that I'm gonna talk to you about um, um, is the Elliptor. Uh, which is um, looks like this uh, again if you don't see me you can um, check out the device uh, videos um, on the asthma Australia website um, so with this particular one you have a dose counter here and it will count down uh, with this particular one you have to open the mouthpiece it's a dry powdered okay so you don't breathe into these dry powder devices always breathe away from them make sure that you don't place your fingers over these vents here okay and then it's exactly the same principle that i demonstrated with a turby and acuhaler breathe out away from the device um, place your mouth around the mouthpiece to get a good seal um, take a deep breath in um, and hold your breath for five to ten seconds and then breathe out through your nose and replace the cover so i'm going to do that now um, like so so and you don't shake this device either it is a really big no-no don't shake the device so um, I'm going to do that now. So push down, check that I've got medication inside, which is here. Breathe away from the device. Place my mouth around the mouthpiece. Hold your breath for five to ten seconds and then breathe out through your nose, okay? Um, and thank you, Asthma Australia. I've also got a video um, I'm not talking about nebulizers today, Amanda. Um, I don't actually have the equipment with me to talk about nebulizers today. Um, but I'm happy to um, do another webinar on um, nebulizers. But um, Asthma Australia do have advice on nebulizers. Um, just remember, um, nebulizers are equally as effective in the treatment and management of asthma. Um, if you're obviously having a severe asthma attack, sometimes in that event they will use a nebulizer, but you can still use a puffer and spacer. Um, so um, I suggest that you um, go to the website and look at that um, and, and get that information. Uh, now, so with the Elliptor, the one important thing to say with that is I've said no shaking it, must be stored in a dry, cool place. Um, please don't get it wet. Again, just a dry cloth wiping it. Um, and really recommended for children um, above 12 years of age. Um, that's just um, what we're actually seeing. The next one I'm gonna to talk to you about is um, a recipe mat, okay, which is a little bit like this. Um, one of my tips with this one is, is that get the pharmacist before you actually leave to actually load and prime the device and get it ready for use because there's six, six steps to load it and it can be a little bit tricky. So um, what I would um, what I would really suggest is that you get the pharmacist to actually load it. Uh, with this particular one, a little bit like the Turby Haler, but it's an aerosol, okay? It's not a dry powdered. So but in saying it's a little bit like a Turby Haler, you need to hold it upright. <coughs> Bear with me. You need to turn the base until you hear a click. Okay, you need a little bit of strength to actually to do that. So again, if you're having problems with dexterity, the elderly <coughs> with arthritis, it can be a little bit of a challenge. <coughs> Bear with me. The next thing you do is um, open the cap to fully expose the mouthpiece, which is that there, okay? <coughs> Sorry, again, same principle, breathe away from the device. But with this particular one, when you're breathing in, you must press down on the dosed counter, which is, sorry, the dose, um, the dose counter, which is just here. So you press down on it to dispel the medication, okay? Really important to taking that deep breath in as you're pressing down on it um, and don't exhale into the device, okay? Again, there are little vents on the side. Don't place your mouth on the vents, okay? And more information on the use of this can also be shown on the Asthma Australia website, okay? Um, <coughs> so again, I'm just gonna show you I'll do it as I'm coughing here away. Uh, so turning the base until you hear a click, okay? And then what you then next do is remove the cap like so, pushing down on here and taking a deep force, or taking a deep breath in, okay? Over here. 
Hold your breath for five to 10 seconds and then breathe out through your nose. Okay, so you will hear a clicking sound. So again, turning that base, taking the dust cap off like so, pushing down on that, pushing down on that as you take a deep breath in, keep breathing in whilst you're holding down on that. And it's usually five to 10 seconds to hold your breath and then breathe out through your nose. Now, um, lovely Robin has already um, beaten me to my last tip, um, which is do not forget with all these um, devices, particularly um, if you're using your inhaled corticosteroids, that you need to rinse and spit out after use, okay? Because what can occur is, is um, oral thrush in the mouth or a hoarse throat. So it's one of the most important things um, that I always say is use a spacer because it can minimize the effects of it, but always rinse and gargle after you've actually used your preventer. And that's the autumn colored ones, that's the orange ones because they can cause that um, hoarse throat or can cause oral thrush. Really important um, to say is Good technique is incredibly important for good control. That's one of my biggest take home messages for you today. Make sure your technique technique is spot on. Um, take it to your GP, um, look at your GP. Now there are other people asking me about Spireva, um, the hand inhaler, breeze inhaler and Jenny inhaler and the, the Spiramax. I don't have placebos for those um, in pediatrics. So what I would suggest is that I would um, recommend that you jump onto the Asper Australia website and look at um, the techniques for actually using those because there's a crossover with Asper and COPD um, and obviously um, I'm in pediatrics. So if you're wanting to know how to use those devices, I encourage you to look, o look onto their website, Asthma Australia. So um, tip, um, don't forget to check your dose counters. Incredibly important. Is there medication in the actual device itself? Um, making sure that you are using it correctly. Little tips like holding it upright, not shaking the device, will all affect the amount of medication. Making sure you're putting the puffer and spacer into the right part of the puffer and spacer. Um, so we really want good asthma control and one of the key messages with good asthma control is using your device correctly so that the medications get into your airways so that you're not getting um, your symptoms. So what I would want you to uh, encourage you to do, to do to today is to jump on to the Asthma Australia website, look at their visual um, technique in how to use it and actually use a device and go through the technique. I'd also encourage you to jump on to the Asthma Australia website and talk to a qualified asthma educator there who can actually talk you through and walk you through in terms of your questions, talk to you about what is good asthma control. Questions such as how often should I be using my reliever? Um, I'm having struggles, difficulty breathing. Is this normal? Should I be waking with my breathing? Should I be um, coughing during the night? I would just reach out to you. They've got fantastic programs such as Coach um, and an online platform where they can actually respond to you and answer to you because I think that's really the key in terms of asthma management is having regular review, having contact with the experts to make sure that you're following the correct procedure, having your asthma action plan um, and really following the correct technique. So uh, thank you for um, joining me and Amanda said wonderful advice. I've been using space for a long time with my son so it's nice to have a refresher course. Um, make sure that for people's birthdays and Christmas is that you give them spaces. Um, um, one person wanted me to refresh them um, on the use of, um, it was great to be able to refresh on the use of Symbicort, that's fantastic. Uh, and Asthma Australia also said take the asthma control test really important because it will determine your level of control. People walk around with their asthma and they think that it's normal to cough and it's not. They think it's normal to have nighttime symptoms and symptoms on waking. It is not. They think it's normal to be using their reliever frequently. Please, if you're using your reliever frequently, what it's telling us is that you've got poor asthma control. You really need to be reviewed by, your, um, by a doctor. Um, and in these crazy times that we are with COVID-19, what I really would encourage you all to do is don't delay in going to see um, your child's doctor or coming to hospital because of your asthma. They are safe places to come and we would really encourage you to follow up with your GP um, 
during these times. Uh, make sure that you're following your asthma action plan and that you're getting things such as um, the flu vac vaccination to prevent you from getting flus and things such as that that are also um, prevalent um, at the moment. So um, thank you for joining me in and I, I've loved spending 50 minutes of the day um, with you across Australia. If you want to talk to an asthma educator, 1800 278 462 or you can register online. So thanks so much um, and um, have a great day. Bye-bye.